welcome ladies and gentlemen to educate today we'll be doing another practice of the uh, of the um, of the human reproduction so yeah just to prepare you for your grade 12 june examination so here we are given 2.2 here the diagram below shows a part of the male reproductive system by the way if you do not understand concepts surrounding the male reproductive system i strongly recommend you to watch my video on um, the male reproductive system and understand it very properly so now uh here you're given a diagram you can surely see that this is part of the male reproductive system considering that there is this ball like structure uh and all that so now let's try to answer the following questions so now question number one says we should identify part a so part a here it is just this part here this part here all of this tube this tube like structure that is that I'm painting with blue is yes, this tube like structure that descends here. So um, this part we call it uh, the we call it the vas deferens or it is called the sperm duct. So part A is known as the sperm duct or you can say it is the vas deferens. So uh, remember its function okay let's just go to 2.2.2 .2. so it says state um one function of part b so you can see that part b here it is showing what it is showing the epididymis because it is just right next to the testes so um the epididymis function it is to store it is to store sperm cells until maturation sperm cells until maturation so that's the function of the epididymis the epididymis just uh is this surround this layer that is surrounding the testes so when the sperm cells are produced in the testes they go to the epididymis unmatured and when they reach the epididymis it will store them until they mature so it stores sperm cells until maturation. Others may say it stores spermatids. That is also correct. And remember, spermatids just is trying to explain that the sperm cells are not yet mature. So that is the function of the epididymis. And then now 2.2.3 says during a vasectomy, part A is cut and tied. So let us first look at part A. Remember, we've identified part A to be the sperm duct, right? So we are cutting the sperm duct. Okay, so it is cut and we are tying it. We are cutting it and we are tying it as shown in the diagram. So now semen will still be released during copulation. Explain the composition of the semen after vasectomy. So this is a three marks question which you should answer very carefully. So we need to know first of all what is the function of part A. Remember part A being the sperm duct, its responsibility it is to transport the sperm cells right here from the epididymis. They will move into the sperm duct until they reach the urethra, right? So it actually transports the sperm cells all the way from the epididymis and until they reach the urethra. So now here during vasectomy we're actually cutting this part so the fact that we are cutting this part which is part uh, part a it means that uh, sperm cells will be blocked right so sperm cells will be blocked sperm cells will be blocked because remember that uh, this whole part this um this vast difference or the sperm duct it is the one that will do it that will allow sperms to move up until they reach to the urethra and eventually outward so now if it is cut and tied we're actually blocking the sperm cells from moving all the way from them all the way from the epididymis to reach the urethra so the sperm cells will be blocked so now they would like us to explain what is the composition of semen after vasectomy they want us to to say to state what is inside the semen after vasectomy because during copulation semen will still be released 
Yes. So remember that we have blocked only the spam cells, and remember that semen is actually a combination of two things. So when you're talking about semen, it is a combination of two things. It is a combination of spam cells that are coming from the testes, and then it's a combination of what? Of uh, the, the fluids that are coming from the glands, the prostate gland, the seminal vesicle, as well as the corpus gland. So now here they want us to explain what will this semen be composed of if we cut and tie this part. First of all, we have already said that the sperm cells will be blocked. Therefore, now we have to mention uh, well, what will the semen be made of. So now we are blocking the sperm cells. Let's just delete them here. So it means that um, this whole semen, the semen here will be composed semen will be composed of of what of secretions we if these are just the fluids that are coming from the glands secretions from the accessory glands from accessory glands Yes, something like this. So now um, here we've explained the composition of the semen. Remember, semen usually contains what? Contains sperm cells that are coming here, from here, from this uh, this region, the testes. And um, they also contain the secretions that are coming from the glands. The other one is the prostate gland, the other one is the corpus, and the other one is the seminal vesicle. So now because we've cut this part, it means that the sperm cells will be blocked. You must mention this and also since the sperm cells will be blocked the semen will now be composed only of the secretions that are coming from the accessory glands so when we're talking about accessory glands we're talking about the uh, the prostate gland or the corpus uh, the corpus gland as well as the seminal vesicles so it means the semen will only be made up of the of those fluids or those secretions sperm cells will not be present Yes, so I can just add this as a point and say that uh, semen without sperm will be released. Semen without sperm cells will be released. So here I think this is enough to get you all the three marks because you have explained what is inside the semen right after you block the sperm by performing a surgery code vasectomy so now we go to 2.2.4 so 2.2.4 here it says in some rare cases males are born with part c located inside the body so let us first try and identify what is part c so part c is just this ball like structure remember we've said that we've identified that to be a uh, the testes so uh, in some cases uh, some males are born with the testes located inside the body. Well, that is very rare because what do we expect actually? We expect something like this. Um, we expect the testes to be to hang just away from the what? Just away from the body. The testes will definitely hang away from the body. In the scrotum particularly. So let's just say these are the legs. So the testes will hang away from the body in the testes. First of all, we need to understand why, why, why do these testes hang away from the body? It is because for them to produce sperm cells efficiently or effectively, then their temperature must be 2 degrees Celsius below the body temperature. So the, body, the normal body temperature is usually 36 degrees Celsius. So their temperature must be around 34 degrees celsius so that they can produce them hence the scrotum will hang them when the temperature is warm so now here in some cases some males are born with those testes located inside the body so it's a case whereby these testes are actually not hanged but they are located right inside the body so now we have to explain the consequence or we have to explain how that how does that condition affect male fertility so this condition first of all will actually violate this two degrees Celsius rule because the testes must produce sperm cells by being at a temperature lower than the body temperature so now when they are connected inside the body let's start uh, let's answer the question now 
2.2.4 so when these testes are connected uh, or are inside the body or connected to the body in some way what will happen um, that their temperature you can say that the temperature of the testes will always be high the temperature of the test is will always be high will always be high so this is because they are connected to the body right so they it will always be high so when it is high how does that um, affect male fertility right so the uh, so here we can just say the temperature will always be high because the testes are connected um, to the body right Okay, or we can say that the testes will receive higher temperatures from the body. I think that is enough for two marks. And then now you have to uh, explain the consequence. I remember for them to produce sperm cells efficiently or for effective spermatogenesis to take place, they must be located away from the body. But then now since they are not located away from the body, then fewer sperm cells, fewer sperm cells will be produced fewer sperm cells will be produced so this means that uh, because they are located away from the body um, they're located closer to the body they will always have a high temperature and then if they have a high temperature they cannot produce sperm efficiently so fewer sperm cells will be produced so leading to infertility leading to infertility so remember that um, we've now answered the question We've explained. Um, we've explained what what is the consequence of um, of these of these part these testes to be closer to the body. They will always receive the higher temperatures from the body, and when they receive high temperatures from the body, they will produce less sperm cells or fewer sperm cells will be produced, and that will eventually lead to infertility. So, when somebody is infertile, it means that they cannot produce reproduce yes they are not fertile they do not have enough sperm cells so now let's go to 2.2.5 the last question they say we should describe the process of spermatogenesis so the process of spermatogenesis before we start answering the question remember i've said in my other videos that whenever you answer such questions when you're describing something first of all you write the term that you're describing we are describing spermatogenesis so sometimes this is usually a compulsory mark they might give you a mark just for stating this composer really so so sometimes if you don't mention it you will lose one mark no matter how many points you put so now you have to mention that you're talking about spermatogenesis so they might give you this mark or not so first of all uh, now we have to describe what is spermatogenesis so in general remember that spermatogenesis is just the process whereby the sperm cells are produced inside the testes right so now we need to describe and know that process so first of all i think i've made a video on this titled uh, sperm structure and spermatogenesis so now you have to mention first that this all happens under the influence of testosterone so you're gonna say under the influence of testosterone under the influence of testosterone testosterone so this happens because of testosterone remember that testosterone is a hormone produced by the testes it is that hormone that makes um that makes the sperm cells to be produced so it's a chemical that actually drives the testes to produce what the sperm cells so now under the influence of that testosterone what will happen the diploid cells diploid cells diploid cells you have to mention the word diploid to say that these uh, these cells are actually containing what um 48 uh, 46 core chromosomes so diploid cells in the seminiferous tubules in the seminiferous tubules this is another mark for mentioning that the the cells that we are talking about here they are inside the seminiferous tubule so what will happen to those diploid cells will undergo they will undergo they will undergo meiosis the process 
whereby they form sperm cells. Remember that sperm cells are just driven by the process whereby some cells just divide and then they form sperm cells. So they will they will undergo meiosis and then what do they form? To form haploid sperm cells. Haploid sperm cells. So this is enough to give you at least five marks. So this is how you explain the process of spermatogenesis. Remember spermatogenesis, we're just asking ourselves how, uh, how are the sperm cells produced inside the testes. So yes, this is just how you explain spermatogenesis. Uh, don't forget to tune in to our practice uh, number four. Yes, practice number four. We'll be talking about the menstrual cycle. And good luck on your June exams. Thank you for watching.